Hello, my friends. This is Matt Doan, your host on the Rising Digital Leader Show. I'm super excited to chat with you today about a topic near and dear to my heart, the creator economy. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's all good. I'll unpack what it is and how you, as a tech professional, can participate in it to generate more wealth and career prosperity. If you're interested in expanding beyond the nine to five and creating more professional and personal opportunities in your life, this one is for you. Please enjoy. Welcome to the Rising Digital Leaders Show. I am your host, Matthew Doan. Today's organizations are powered by digital capabilities, cloud, data science, cybersecurity, and much more. To be competitive, we must have tech-savvy leaders steering the ships. But these people don't come out of thin air. We must develop them. This show is for the technical experts of the world, those brave souls that feel unheard and lost in the crowd, but know they were born to lead. We need you to rise, to become impactful digital leaders. In these episodes, we help you undergo a self-transformation, developing the mindset and skill set that'll massively enhance your abilities, influence, and career potential. We take a different approach, pulling in lessons from philosophy, psychology, neuroscience, and history to enrich the professional and personal aspects of your life. Thank you for your time. Please subscribe to the Rising Digital Leader Show. Now, let's dig in. All right, so we're digging into the creator economy today. We'll cover what it's all about and how you, as a digital professional, can engage in it to diversify your career and monetize your brain power. I hope that sounds interesting. I've got five big points to walk you through, so let's dive right in. Point number one, we're seeing fundamental shifts in the global economy. I always love a little history lesson. So let's begin with a review of how the economy has evolved since the digital age unfolded. First off, economics. What's that? Well, it's the study of how scarce resources are allocated, whether that's money, land, or food. Scarcity is an interesting concept today, especially when it comes to information. We've got seemingly endless information at our fingertips. So what's actually scarce? Well, in a state of cognitive overload, what's scarce is our attention, our ability to focus on one thing over another. You feel that strain as much as I do. We're in distraction hell. Nobel laureate Herbert Simon framed this growing concern in the 1970s by coining the term attention economy. He said that a wealth of information creates a poverty of attention. Ain't that the truth? This all means that those who command attention command the markets. The attention economy hit full force with the rise of Google around the year 2000. At the core, the attention economy is an ad-based revenue model. It's dominated the creative industries for over two decades now. So say you're a creator. You make short films, you teach video game hacks, or you write about personal finance. It's been difficult to monetize these passions. You needed the permission of large organizations to enable your work to spread, to make money. However, the attention economy enabled a small portion of people to break through. The most noisy and high-value creators broke through and dominated social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and more recently, TikTok. And the top 1% of content creators on these platforms are finding ways to become amazingly wealthy. Funny thing is, social forces are changing, and so are marketplaces. As venture capitalist Lee Jin hinted at, we're edging towards a middle class for creators, where more people can break through and monetize their passions. In a displacement of the attention economy, we're seeing the rise of the creator economy. That leads me to point number two. The creator economy is real, so pay attention. I love one of Jay-Z's sayings. He says, I'm not a businessman. I'm a business, man. That sums up the potential of today's dedicated creators, and it's the ethos of the creator economy. 
So what exactly is the creator economy? It's made up of the platforms, marketplaces, and tools that are decentralizing creative expression and entrepreneurship. This new setup is empowering independent creators to make a living by monetizing their passions. In years past, creators needed the built-in audience from the platforms. If you were a writer, for example, you posted your blogs on Medium to obtain reach and attention. Same goes for other platforms. The 1% monetized fairly well in this type of setup. But as creators started gaining leverage and cultivating a fan base around their specific interests, the barriers to entrepreneurship fell. It's become way more feasible to build lucrative side hustles and even convert those efforts into full-time creative businesses. This was a subtle but powerful shift. Now, platforms need the communities that independent creators have built. Just see how Spotify paid to acquire Joe Rogan's podcast with an exclusive $100 million licensing deal. Check out Mr. Beast's empire built through YouTube. Or see TikTok's Creator Fund, which helps creators earn money doing what they love and create a livelihood. Interestingly, the creator economy has been on approach since the 1990s. People have always been optimistic that it would arrive, but the platforms and economics weren't strong enough until recently. The delay has frustrated many creators over the years, as a roadblocked creator economy impoverishes us all. Millions of ideas remain trapped as most people stay heads down toiling away at their day jobs. Their passions, their ideas for change get locked in their heads. But as Tyler Cowen and Alex Tabarrok argue at Marginal Revolution, there are markets in everything. And we're now seeing that with the rise of the creator economy. Point number three, then. There are many promising reasons to participate. All right, so we're getting into it a little bit more now. Let's talk about you for a moment. Why would you want to participate in the creator economy? If you're in tech, there's a good chance you've got a great job working for some company today. Probably a healthy salary, good benefits, maybe even some stock options. Why would you want to waste time tinkering as an independent creator on the side? Here's my hypothesis. We all have interests and desires inside that are boiling over. Unless we design and own our own business, there's no corporate job that can fully meet what our inner voice is yearning for us to do. I believe we each need to explore our uniqueness and give it a real chance. As humans, we're wired to see what we're capable of. So I've got five good reasons for you to start creating today. First up, very simple, monetize your skills. Generate additional streams of income that enhance your wealth. Secondly, diversify your career portfolio. Putting more irons in the fire creates more optionality in your career. This makes you more resilient to job loss and opens doors to serendipity. You never know which people or opportunities may come across your desk. Shape a personal brand. Gone are the days of the CV. Your online body of work does all the talking. So build in public, show what you're capable of, and position yourself in alignment with your desired future self. Fourth, generate audience and impact. Creators use the internet to reach people at scale and cultivate super fans. Bring people into your orbit and change their lives for the better. They'll stick around for you, not just your product or service. And lastly, participate to seek inner fulfillment. We all have a creative side that we need to address. No corporate environment will fully scratch that itch. So make sure you're paying attention to the work your heart is telling you to do and make sure you pursue it creatively. So those are some good reasons to join into the creator economy, right? All right, next up, point number four. Lots of ordinary people are diving in as creators and being rewarded. So can you. Let me give you a prime example. His name is Jack Butcher. Jack is a trained designer who previously worked on brand campaigns for large companies. After about a decade, he spun off to create his own agency. 
He soon saw how his clients were valuing specific elements of his work, especially his visualizations of philosophical concepts. He also grew tired of exchanging his time for money. There was a clear cap on how much he could earn based on the effort expended. He wanted to have much greater impact and freedom, but he needed to divorce time and income. Since then, he's doubled down on his passions, founding a company called Visualize Value. In the last few years, Jack has created a massive following on Twitter, which serves as his primary distribution channel. Today, he sells two courses that are productized versions of his design knowledge. Additionally, he's killing it in creating and selling NFT art, or non-fungible tokens, while also doing a paid newsletter and targeted coaching. Definitely follow Jack's journey to see how your own path could unfold in a similar way. I also, on the side, recommend his courses, Build Once, Sell Twice, and How to Visualize Value. They've been life-changing for me and looking at how to participate in the creator economy. Next up, I'll turn the lens on myself. This podcast is a literal example of me, Matt Doan, a creator, participating in the creator economy. I have a specific mission, helping tech professionals unlock fulfilling careers and freedom in their lives. I'm creating this concentrated ecosystem of activities that are all creative in nature. My aim is to help those who could benefit from my worldview and my knowledge. In turn, I'll be unlocking a bigger and brighter future for myself and my family. That's how an economy works. We feed off one another. I have plans for expanding what I'm doing over time, and what you're experiencing now is one piece of that puzzle. Notice how I don't need to ask for permission to make this happen. I do this work, my podcast, on the fringes of my day, outside of my day job. Okay, finally, let's talk about how this could play out for you. We talked about Jack Butcher and his design career. I talked a little bit on how I'm working as a creator. Now, let's say you are in data science. You're 10 years into your career. You've got solid experience and ideas that you'd like to amplify into the world and be rewarded for it. I suggest you first review several factors before diving in. Effort, difficulty, consistency, value, and scale. You'll want to optimize in these various categories based on what you're choosing. You want to make sure you get the most bang for the buck, not drowning yourself too much in your side hustle, but actually getting a lot of impact for the time that you put into it. Tactically, there are a range of methods for you to choose from. Here are a few. Write for Medium. Participate in Medium's partner program and write articles for publications like Towards Data Science. Another option might be building and publishing an API on an API marketplace like Rapid API. In promoting software interconnectivity with your code, you can make some bank and build relationships across communities. Another option would be to serve in a freelance role. Participate in platforms like TopTal, Upwork, and Fiverr to advertise your skills. Companies, both large and small, are increasingly comfortable with hiring expert freelancers, and they'll pay well. Another option could be to build an online course where you teach data science to beginners or run a targeted boot camp on a specific need. Lastly, think about career coaching for the broader data science community. There are tons of people that I guarantee could benefit from your wisdom. All right, do you see that possibility? These are all channels that leverage your innate talents and interests. And best of all, you get to choose exactly what you offer. And believe me, there's a market for everything. To cap off this argument for participating in the creator economy, let's look at some trends. 30% of kids in the US and the UK want to be a YouTuber. Even more striking, 70% of Americans say they'd like to be running their own business. You can see societal attitudes and employment opportunities are rapidly evolving. I urge you to look long and hard at participating in the creator economy. Okay, last idea, point number five. Have a clear strategy for entering the creator economy. I've got several principles for you. First is understand your unique interests and skills 
and map those to market needs. Get very comfortable with these because I guarantee you there are people that desire them and will pay. Secondly, establish distribution. This is hard work, but important. Yes, it involves social media. So pick one or at most two platforms and start learning the ins and outs of building a community there. Secondly, take email seriously. You want to pull people from rented land like social media and bring them onto your own land that you are the sole owner of, and that's your email list. You'll want to own the rails, as they say, as much as possible. So work social media and email together to make sure that you're getting the most reach and ownership over your distribution. Thirdly, focus on a niche audience. Learn where your tribe hangs out. Facilitate collaborations once you've figured that out. And then also network into that community. Give value. Have them trust you. This takes work, but you've got to show up, deliver value, and support others. Fourth idea then is to support and link with other influential creators. You see, we're all in this together. The creator economy is ripe for cross-selling and audience sharing. Leverage the already established reach of adjacent creators. Work with them, offer value, guest posts, be on their podcasts. All sorts of activities help you support other creators, and in turn, they'll want to help you. Last idea then is to consider the ecosystem that you're designing. We need to be very thoughtful. You can't be everywhere, but maybe you've chosen to do a combination of one-on-one coaching, mastermind groups, and YouTube videos. That's a lot right there. You've chunked off a lot. You'll want to understand how your social media and email activity connects and facilitates relationship development and sales amongst those activities. Think of a network diagram on how one thing feeds another, all leading downstream towards actual revenue and great relationships. You'll want to understand the flows here. Uh, Build funnels by learning from people like the sales guru, Russell Brunson. He's been awesome in teaching me all about sales funnels. Also, choose appropriate marketplaces. Gumroad is one example of a platform where creators can obtain significant reach to sell their work and keep most of the profits. All right, we've touched on many aspects of the creator economy in this episode. To summarize, we reviewed, number one, fundamental economic shifts in recent years. Number two, the rise of the creator economy. Number three, the many promising opportunities that exist to participate. Number four, we ran through some examples, including how this works for digital professionals. And number five, we talked about some principles for getting started. The business case for the creator economy is hopefully clear. Money and power are shifting from the attention economy to the creator economy. We're seeing the talents of individual creators being unbundled from big corporations and unleashed in new lucrative ways. The creator economy is actually similar to a world we used to know, one where the individual artist could make a good living from their skills and interests. I personally welcome this renaissance. So I urge you to think deeply about what the creator economy could mean for you. I'm not saying go quit your stable job and live a hippy-dippy coffee shop lifestyle. No, that's not it at all. I'm merely asking you to open your mind to the new possibilities. Your tech skills are in huge demand, and with the right strategy, you can scale your impact and your rewards tremendously. Thanks for listening today. I'll catch you next time. This is your host, Matthew Doan. Thank you for listening to the Rising Digital Leaders Show. Again, my mission is to help you elevate your career as a digital leader and live a thriving life. I hope this episode sparks new thinking and helps you take meaningful action in your world. If you enjoyed the experience, I'd be so grateful if you subscribed and left a five-star review. That's it for now. Until next time, my friends, stay virtuous.